video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from thecreativedejo.net. Welcome to another After Effects quick tip video tutorial. Today's tutorial, this is actually related to a previous tutorial that I did a couple of months back on the kind of proximity effector expression within After Effects. Basically, it's kind of a way to basically trigger other layers whenever a layer is approaching those layers. And so you can kind of trigger animations or trigger reactions and stuff like that whenever a layer approaches another layer in terms of position. And in the comment section of that video, someone asked how to do something similar, except on how to orient kind of layers and make things look at a certain layer whenever it comes by. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys kind of how to do something similar to that. And so we have something like this, where we kind of have a sphere, and whenever this sphere moves around, all the layers around it that we choose will auto-orient themselves and kind of look or face that layer right here. And so this has kind of been driven using a wiggle expression, but of course you can actually manually control the sphere, move it wherever you want, and all the layers will react and kind of move dynamically and look at this sphere. So this is kind of like a, a part two of the tutorial series on how to make things kind of dynamic and reactive using expressions within After Effects. So inside After Effects, there's a built-in function called the look at function. And basically it takes two arguments of from point and at point, and it returns a value of an array that's a three item array. And this function is typically used for what we describe what we want is to basically force layers to look at another layer. But typically this is used in three dimensions and 3D space. So it requires kind of like a 3D layer. And as you can see here, the return value can be used as an expression for the orientation property, making the Z axis of the layer point to the at point. And if you're using this on a camera, make sure you turn off auto orientation. And this is kind of a quick example right here. And this would work just fine. Now, if you want to do this in kind of a 2D world, a 2D environment with 2D layers, you're gonna run into some issues that I found. And a guy named Stefan Dixon actually came up with a solution for this, which I think I see on Slack all the time. So on his blog here on Pure and Applied, he kind of describes the issue that I kind of experienced. And so basically, whenever you know you use the look at function, you kind of strip away one of the dimensions and use that and plug it into the typical 2D rotation property, which takes a one dimensional value. You run into this issue here where basically, whenever the look at point is below the look from point, the direction kind of reverses. So you can see the eyeballs here kind of flip whenever this kind of look at point drops below the actual eyeballs. And this is just kind of one example of what you can do with the kind of look at function. If you're doing like a, like a character rig or animation rig or whatever like that, um, this is a pretty cool way of doing it, uh, minus this issue here. And so to kind of combat that, he kind of wrote his custom little function, which we're gonna be using today in this tutorial. And this is the good stuff right here. Basically, he creates his own look at me kind of custom function. Again, it takes our from point and a two point. He calculates the difference in the position of these points right here. We'll do some error correcting. And this is the magic right here where he uses kind of trigonometry, flashback to pre-calculus and calculus days, kind of calculates that. And basically if the X difference is negative, add 180. This will kind of correct that issue. And then by using this custom function, you can actually achieve the results that you kind of want that you kind of expect using a look at function in 2D space. And so this is the finished expression right here on how to use it. It also takes it one step further and actually creates kind of a custom method on how to mimic and actually improve the auto orient rotation feature within After Effects. And this is actually not related to what we're talking about, but in case you were kind of stumbling upon this, this second block right here, it's just kind of his way to kind of improve on the auto orient feature within After Effects. And basically what it does is it kind of looks ahead until there's movement and prevents the actual looking layer to get confused whenever the layer is starting the movement. Um, and that typically happens on the very, very first keyframe. And so basically this expression will kind of line the layer up before it moves and it's ready to go as soon as it starts moving. And so this is kind of like an improved version of that, but this is kind of a distraction here. What we're interested in is kind of this block right here. And of course, all credits go to him for this. I don't take any credit for this. I can just kind of sum up on it on A Enhancer. So we're gonna use this kind of expression right here. We'll go ahead and copy it and go into our tutorial comp where I have a more simplified version of the comp. And so basically I want this kind of arrow to kind of orient and look at my sphere. And all you gotta do is hit R on the keyboard to bring up the rotation of the arrow. Go ahead and hit alter option on the keyboard and paste the expression into the rotation of the arrow. And so I'm gonna kind of move things around a little bit. I'll have to keep my variables up top if possible. So we'll go ahead and move this up top here. And this is the main function, and this is calling the function and inserting the arguments right here. And so for the two point, this is basically what it's looking at. And so for this, I wanna bring up the position. 
of the circle. So we'll go ahead and hit P on the keyboard for the circle position. And we'll go back to the expression and we'll go ahead and pick whip to the circle position as the two point and make sure you end it with the semicolon if it's not already there. And that will kind of fix things. And the from point is going to be, which is basically its own self transform position. So the from point is where we're at, which is the arrow itself in the position of the arrow. And then the two point, you're gonna pick whip to the position of what you wanna look at, which in our case is the circles position right here. And so just like that, whenever we move our circle, our arrow will always point and look to our circle. And for whatever reason, if you wanted to kind of offset the look or rotation of this arrow or whatever it is you're doing, you can always just add whatever, whatever it is you want to add to the end. And it will kind of offset in case your object is not oriented properly or the shape of it is weird and you kind of want to offset it for whatever reason, you have the option to kind of just add your own offset here or attach it to a slider control and do it that way. But typically this will work right here. And so now whenever we duplicate our arrows, and we make a whole bunch of copies, you're gonna see that all of our copies are auto-oriented to our circle. And then whenever we move our circle around, things kind of react properly here. And so cool, this kind of gets you halfway there, but the original question was how do we do this only whenever the sphere gets close to existing arrows. So that'll be kind of a fun challenge for you guys, but a little breakdown in case you just want to get to the good part. Basically in the original tutorial, I used the linear expression or the ease expression to kind of calculate whenever things get close, I just added an offset to the scale or I added an offset to the position. But basically instead of adding a definite, you know, defined value, you would actually return or use this right here. Look at me from point to point, and you're gonna use this as the actual trigger expression or trigger value whenever the sphere gets close to the arrow layer. So fun little exercise, just a little quick tip on how to do this with an After Effects. Really cool expression by Stefan, mad props to him. Before I go, I wanna give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is a one platform to create an amazing website which is for your store, online business, or portfolio. It's an amazing team to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any code or knowledge required. They have awesome 25 hour support and best of all, you smart code Dojo at checkout. You can actually save 10% off your order and support the Dojo. Check it out over at squarespace.com slash Dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. If you guys like videos like this, give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more videos like this. My name is Vincent and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.